Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle and uh, welcome back to my shop. And many of you know that uh, what you see is uh, kind of a day by day what comes into my shop. And uh, I'm not uh, prejudicial to any particular brand or that. I would just simply work on whatever my customers bring in. So the uh, customer just brought this one in. I'm not familiar with the reel, but that doesn't stop me from doing this work. This is a Trophy Angler Performance Pro. It's a size 60 reel. Uh, reading on the reel quickly, it says it's a 4.6 to 1 retrieve with four ball bearings. It seems overall uh, like we got a uh, loose handle here. Uh, a little bit of a wobble in the shaft it seems like, but uh, customers just asked me to tune it up to getting ready for the surf fishing season. And uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, this will give you an opportunity to see how to tune up a, a mid-size to large surf fishing reel. And uh, we'll go along and we'll explain some of the things that are going on in the reel itself. And um, maybe doing a review on it. So I notice this has been uh, broken on the button. The, uh, the button handle holds the handle, and I suspect that's probably why we have a wobble there. Uh, I'll see if I can find a replacement button, but in the meantime, we're going to start by taking the uh, taking the handle assembly off and the uh, the gear, gearing side plate off. So uh, this should hold the handle. Maybe it was just loose. This uh, this little break on the, the button itself is not really material to the performance of the reel. It uh, would let some water in. You'd like to see a solid seal on that. Those uh, those buttons are relatively um, uh, standard, so I'll see if I can find one. But it won't be during this video uh, as we are constrained on time. Next thing I like to do is take the spool off. Now this one's been sitting a while. There's no line on it. There's a lot of dirt on the spool itself, so. Uh, I think the, the customer probably just is looking to, to use this as some kind of a backup. And we'll get underneath this, we'll look at the drags on a little bit. So one of the things I'm going to do right now as we're working on this, I'm going to clean this up. I use a, uh, a general degreaser. In this case, it's Purple Power. It's an industrial strength cleaner degreaser. It's available at Walmart. It's available in uh, various auto parts stores. It's also available online. I like it. It does, uh, it does good work, and it's uh, relatively inexpensive. I think that quart may be uh, six or seven dollars. And generally speaking, uh, takes uh, takes grime and junk off pretty quickly. And I think you'll see that just uh, as we go through this. Uh, you can see right away that it's just it's just polished this up. Took all that stuff right off that spool. And I would tell you if you have a problem with. Uh, uh, any of that type of uh, you know build up and grind fish scales things like that I've found that it's worked very well okay we're going to take the uh, side plate off get to the business side of this let's see whether how this reel was made most of the uh, spinning reels kind of have the same technology it has a big drive gear it has uh, some sense of a cross wind block and then it has a, uh, a cross wind gear which makes the spool go up and down and uh, for the most part, uh, it's really just a variance on sizes and maybe how they attach the spool uh, shaft and some other things. But for the most part, uh, I don't get nervous when I start opening these up because the technology has been around a long time, generally has not changed. For those of you new to uh, what I do, uh, I open up my shop and show you the reels that I work on as they come in. Uh, I always try and give some hints uh, along the way. So one of the things you'll notice is I have a protective glove on my hand. That's to keep most of the contaminants off of that. Uh, I do uh, use a parts bucket to put all of my small pieces and parts as I take them off the reel. And I do take uh, pictures along the way. So uh, if I forget or if I don't uh, don't know where a piece went that maybe is left in the, uh, in the parts tray there, I can go back and, and research that. Now my pictures happen to be on a video, but uh, one of the pictures that you could uh, certainly take is cell phone or digital camera. And this would be a good example. Just take a picture of what it looks like fully assembled. In this case, the reel's pretty clean. It's dry, but it's clean, and we've already found the first bearing. Uh, for the four bearings on this reel, okay? So most of the time you cannot pull this main gear out. In this case, it made a liar out of me right away. Uh, this one was able to pull out. But usually what you have to do is remove that spool shaft. We're gonna go ahead and do that anyway because I noticed we've got uh, a lot of the older grease is just accumulated on the back and it's not serving any purpose. So we will go clean that up. In order to take that spool shaft off, we're gonna take the 
the uh, nut or the screw out of the cross wind block. That'll enable us to pull that spool shaft up. And as soon as we get that out, I guess there's one or two more. It's just being particularly stubborn. There we go. Okay, and that's another reason why I use that, that um, parts tray. It's just a nice place to know where you're putting your stuff. All right, here's our, uh, our shaft that came out. I'm going to use a paper towel just to wipe off the old grease on that. Then we uh, can turn our attention over here. We'll pick up the cross wind block. This one bothers me a little bit. I'm noticing that there's some can, uh, something broken off here. Now that may be as simple as the uh, a piece of that um, assembly that was holding the handle in, or it may be something more significant. So I'll keep my eyes open as we go through the servicing on this reel. Uh, from the back, again, it's mostly this one is just old grease, and the customer just asked for a tune-up. So we're going to go ahead and, and, and clean that out. And, I'm going to put that in the parts bucket now, but when we reassemble, we will re-lube that. Here's your uh, cross wind gear. Your cross wind gear is held in by a screw, so we're going to take that screw out. And in this case, I'm not going to put this one in the parts bucket, because I'm just simply going to take this out. It's at the bottom of the reel assembly. I'm going to use a cotton swab to clean out some of that old grease including the grease that's on that backside bearing. So there's bearing number two. I'm just going to clean that accumulated grease out of there. And then we're going to re-lube this and we're going to go put that right back on. So it's okay if um, if you're doing something temporary to leave that. But I can tell you I've had experiences just right here on my my workbench where I go to re-lube, forget that that screw's there, and uh, catch it with my my hand or a tool or something and the next thing you know that piece and part just flying somewhere and we're uh, we're in trouble trying to find it okay so I use a uh, pen reel precision grease for most of my reels uh, I call it blue grease it's available a lot of manufacturers make it uh, it doesn't matter you don't have to line up the one with the other uh, but uh, it's designed and built for fishing reels and I recommend that if you're doing the servicing on your reel, you make sure that you're using a grease that's uh, fishing reel grease. And the reason for that is some of this other stuff is too thick uh, or too thin. I've seen people that have used Vaseline as a grease. Uh, it probably works a couple of times, but it's not going to stand up to the rigors of a, um, a full season on, on the sea. And uh, what's going to happen is that you're going to wind up with a dry reel. I've also seen people use axle grease from cars, totally not appropriate. It traps a lot of things like sand in that and it just becomes an abrasive. Okay, I use a Real X uh, Real Oil for my bearings and we have a bearing in the back here so I'm going to soak that and uh, then I'm just going to put that aside for a moment. We're going to go up top here and we're going to pull the rotor assembly. I'm going to guess that's where bearing number three is. So. You, you want to make sure you're tightening and loosening these reels properly. So one of the first things to do is have the right tool. I happen to have an offset so it reaches in under the collar of the rotor. But I also notice that this has a reverse thread. So what would normally be tightening, that is turning the nut clockwise, is actually removing the nut and collar here. I put that into my small tray and now I can pull off the, the top to see what we have. So we have a uh, we have a quality reel here, but this is not instant anti-reverse. This is a, uh, a simply a uh, uh, an older uh, tooth and claw kind of a thing. I just pulled that off as you saw because I wanted to get to the bearing here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get that done. I'm going to use our bearing grease on that. And we can go ahead and reinstall this again. Bearing shims, and there's the. Oops. And then we want to pull that back in here so that we have that set. There we go. Okay, so we're in good shape with that. Very good. Okay, so once we have that done, we move over to putting the rotor back on. 
I like on what I'm seeing. The, uh, the case is a graphite or a plastic case, so it's not the uh, it's lightweight. It's not uh, not a metal case. It's probably I'm going to guess from what I'm seeing here with that anti reverse that the reel is uh, probably about six or seven years old. It doesn't look like it's been abused at all. It uh, it does look like it hasn't been serviced much either. Uh, so it's one of those things. Okay. Very good. That clicker working. All right, we're going to go clean that main drag out. Take all that excess stuff. It's just dried in older grease. And I use the uh, the Q-tip or the cotton swab to do that. And we'll just uh, we'll put some fresh grease on this one. Just to make sure that it stays lubricated throughout the season. And uh, I use a screwdriver here. Some people say, why don't you use a a little uh, brush like a flux brush uh, I like the metal on metal for the, uh, the use of this because it keeps the uh, uh, the risk of, of having small pieces of uh, brush hairs or monofilament or things uh, trapped in here so that's why I do it the way I do it but uh, your choice in terms of how you choose to spread the, uh, the lubrication on there okay so I've checked all of these all the teeth are correct they're not uh, injured broken chipped or uh, or otherwise damaged I do the same thing on the back wheel here and then I just simply reinstall the, the uh, main drive make sure that this bearing on the outside gets the oil so those are the three bearings so the fourth bearing then is in the bail assembly up top here and uh, We'll make sure we put a, a shot of oil on that. Okay, so now I'm back into my parts bucket, picking up oops before I do that. This is another way place where the, the parts bucket absolutely helps you. Uh, you can see the little screw in there for the main shaft. So I want to reinstall the shaft and I want to reinstall the, uh, the crosswind block before we complete the assembly. So pull that up. Push the bearing back in there. Here's my cross wind block. Again, a little bit of uh, blue grease on this. Keep that nice and lubricated. Lubrication in the channel as well. That sits on the stud that's on the cross wind block. Okay, now we can reinstall the spool shaft. shaft screw goes in next and those of you that watch my videos know this is the time in the in the video where I have my troubles with the smaller pieces and parts so I apologize again for having those technical difficulties but it, uh, it's almost invariable that uh, just uh, struggle with the pieces. So this is a testimony. You don't need the, the latest in technology. You don't need the the, the fanciest color reel or the latest uh, fashion statement that's out there. If you if you have a reel that you take care of it'll take care of you and that's what we're doing here we're just taking care of this reel taking care to make sure that it's, it's properly lubricated that it's clean that any contamination is removed out of there that it's oiled that the bearings are in place and uh, this will last the season so the uh, the fellow that's brought this reel in it's the first time he brought it in and again I'm gonna guess it's four or five years old but he just woke up one day I guess and figured maybe he even had it on uh, on his shelf and uh, I hadn't used it in a while, maybe because that uh, that handle button has a crack in it or something. But uh, at least he was he was wise enough to figure out that uh, he should get it serviced before he takes it down to the uh, the surf, makes some casts, catches onto a fish, and finds out that the reel fails because uh, it, you know it's got some contamination, something breaks, something sticks on it, or whatever. So it's uh, if you do this yourself, you can save a couple of bucks. And uh, you can do it more frequently if you like, uh, but uh, 
I recommend on something like this if it's got light use that it's only done once a year. If this is a, if this was a heavy heavily used reel and you can tell that by uh, you know bangs and scars and all that other kind of stuff that's on the reel. But if it was uh, more heavily used, I would say do one at the beginning of the season, one at the midpoint, and then uh, do a thorough cleaning and uh, servicing at the end of this. So, all right, we're going to see if we can get it to hold with this button again. Uh, as I said, after this video is over, I'll go back and try and find a replacement button for this. But right now, this one should hold the handle. There you go. All right. Okay. So we gotta, I don't know if I like that in the uh, in the reel. Uh, let me take a look at the drags, too, while we're at it. This video may be running a little bit long, but let's go take a quick look at the drags. Let's see what we got there. And again, when I do this service for the actual reel, I, I would certainly do the, the, the drag assemblies. Okay, so we have felt washers in here. If felt washers get oiled, and you can use the same reel oil, you can see the, the felt. And the, the idea here is just simply to keep it, uh, keep it uh, flexible. All right, so we can use the same oil that we used for the, the bearings. That's just a general reel oil. We're going to just put a nice little dose on the felt washer. The way this lays out is if there's a felt washer and then there's a round washer. Another felt washer goes on top of that. Another shot of oil. Then there's usually an eared washer that falls to the middle of the stack. That would be this one. That goes in. The last of the felt washers goes on. And then we want to give that a shot too. Okay last of the metal washers and then we reset that spring that rides in the groove in this uh, in the spool assembly. And you want to be careful with the spring. It is a spring so it can shoot. So you'll notice that I'm keeping my, my finger on there just so that if it, if it does have a tendency to want to move it, I'm going to hold it now at my touch. Okay so here we go then. We're going to put that spool back on. It's been nice and cleaned with that uh, that degreaser. We've uh, oiled up the reel, tightened up the handle. We'll go try to find a button for that uh, in a little bit. And we're just going to uh, give it a crank here, see how we do in terms of uh, the performance. Okay, well I don't like that, that anti-reverse click, but uh, it's a smooth smooth operating reel. But, uh, you know, I, I guess that's something he's used to. So uh, there you go. All right. So nice reel, four, uh, four, four ball bearing, uh, three ball bearings, that are the ones that are needed, the one on the shaft, the two on e each side of the, um, uh, the main gear. Um, fourth one would be here, this would be the, the line roller bearing, and uh, probably, uh, it was probably about a 30 or $35 reel. I'm sure it's all set up for the season, and uh, they should do well uh, fishing that in the upcoming uh, summer runs. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like it. Uh, if you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. I thank you for viewing the video. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.